This is the wildest of speculation. Hey, wait a this baby. is why we so, do this show, baby. Grogu. We know Grogu was alive during Order 66. He was at the Jedi Temple. Where did he go? Who right. hit him? Who got him out? He's gone. And you won't find him. Welcome back to Fresh Ink. Woo! We are back. We did it. We did it. You can chop off our limbs, leave us for dead on Mustafar, but we are back and maybe we're evil? Hello there. Stronger than ever. <laughs> uh, that lovely voice is Emily from X-Play, everyone. She's joining us today. Hello. And by the way, this is a spoiler rich, spoiler heavy episode where we're going to be covering Obi-Wan on Disney Plus. The first two episodes dropped this week. And uh, what do you say, you guys? We just get right into it. Let's do it. There's Let's a do lot it. to talk no, about here. Time. Let's talk about first impressions. What do you guys think? I know we all just got done watching it. Um, did we think that it lived up to our expectations? Are we disappointed? Are we curious? I mean, I'll just say... I don't know exactly what I was expecting, and it delivered that, if that makes mm. any sense. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed everything. The biggest, there's a lot of twists, a lot of turns, a lot of things that they kind of did not let us know was coming, and we see it, like, we'll just get into it, Leia. I have like, no idea that we were gonna get to see Leia, yeah. and a majority of the story would be about her. What a fun surprise that was. It really Love was. it. Nice yeah, little yeah, misdirection. All the marketing material basically pointed us toward this, you know, the the relationship between Obi-Wan mm -hmm. and, and Luke, which makes a lot of sense, considering, you know, what we know in A New Hope. Uh, but I think that what was even more um, satisfying for me was that we were just continuing to get more of the world building for the galaxy far, far away, which is is something that like as Star Wars nuts, like we just want more of because, you know, you get it in the, you got it in the books and the old legends books and you get it a little bit in the comics as well. Uh, but to just see it brought to life, it's so freaking cool. Just the different aspects of it. And even even though like a lot of the content that Star Wars has released has been on Tatooine, I still feel like we're always getting something new and Tatooine. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I I enjoyed it. It was it was fantastic, and we came out of it. Uh, I watched it with my my wife and my two friends who were in town. We came out of it. And we were like, that was just freaking phenomenal. It was just that fun. was great. It felt like a natural sequel, you know. And yeah. then that prequel, uh, like, uh, you oh, know, my the recap, the, oh my god, <laughs> recap. My heart was like, my heart was going fast because like I don't remember. I know I saw episode one in theaters as a kid. I very much visually remember seeing episode two in theaters as a kid. So having that flashback was like, oh yeah. But yeah, yeah same with Bcom. You I, made me feel really old right now. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. I went as I remember, uh, I remember I went as Empire in theaters. Like, oh my god. <laughs> I went as Ami Dollar for Man, Halloween. I would love to have seen the kid, honestly. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it kind of came in with no expectations, especially after Boba Fett. That's where I kind of am right now, where I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to drop everything. I'm just going to let this show happen. Episode one, holy cow. And then yeah, episode two, I think one is still my favorite. Episode two is kicking off like, oh shit, what's going to happen next for me? We, can't, we don't do profanity on the show. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'll leave. Um, but, but yeah, I think episode, there were some moments in episode two where I'm like, all right. But episode one I thought was like, so good. See, I felt like I thought episode two was better in the sense like I thought episode one did a good job of setting everything up. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh yeah, he's got the hero's journey in front of us. He's gonna keep saying, no, I'm not gonna do this. No, I'm not gonna do this. No, I'm gonna do this. All right, I'm gonna do this. And then I think it was smart that they released episode two along with it because yeah. episode mm -hmm. two left us on that great cliffhanger of mm -hmm. <sighs> What a wonderful pairing of episodes. I, I loved these two episodes. And, and part of what I liked about them and what I like about these Disney Plus um, series is that they've really like narrowed down into um, a smaller, simpler story. I just got done watching a bunch of Clone Wars and like <laughs> yeah. it felt like I was studying for like a, a midterm or something. And I there's like question. this person. Yeah. Did you watch it in the chronological order via the list online or did you watch it in the release order? I, w I watched I watched it through a uh, an article that was put out through South yes, Africa. Yes, that is the chronological. Okay. That is the correct order. Okay, uh, you heard it here. But that's my the correct head was order. swimming. There's a lot of characters, but it, it it did feel like I was like, okay, that's cool. There's a lot of stuff. What I like about the Mandalorian, what I like about so far about Obi Wan, is that like here's one guy. 
right? And here's yep. kind of where we left off and here's some extra stuff, but we're not going to push a ton on you because as a person who like comes for story first and characters first, um, I can't be inundated with extra stuff. And I thought so far they've really like eased me in. And, and, and really to kind of like piggyback onto that, when the recap popped up, right? I was like, are we going to get some Clone Wars stuff in here? And they didn't. They didn't show yeah. anything in the recap, yeah. or like from the Clone Wars series. But I think that it's great because it didn't require you to have to go through, uh, you know, the encyclopedia yeah, of Star Wars Yeah, I didn't history. need any of that. That being out. said, Disney, so far. Disney Plus UK did release a tweet that was like, here are the mandatory watching for Obi-Wan. And it, split, it listed specific Clone Wars arcs. Yeah. Um, but I was laughing so hard because I wrote this down in my notes. There's the moment where Obi-Wan has the fever dream, which is also kind of a flashback in episode one where he's seeing Padme, he's seeing Anakin, he's seeing the good times, he's seeing the bad times. In my notes, I was like, what if he just does drugs and then dreams in the Clone Wars? Yeah. And then we yeah. have this wild animated dream of his where we get to see these moments because the Clone Wars really flashback out Anakin's character and just gives him a lot more to play with. And I think it's just that's such I'm, I'm really excited to see how it plays into this show more. It's, it is that thing of like, you know, from A New Hope where he's like, and he was a good friend, which we didn't see that friendship really much in the movies, but we definitely got it in the, yeah. in the cartoon. I, 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 I just uh, uh, again comment on the opening montage. It, it made me feel old as well. But like, boy, is that just like the best way to start this series. It's like that uh, Richard Linklater movie, like Boyhood, you know, where they shot it over 12 years and you're mm -hmm. like, by the end of it, you're like, am I part of this family? Like, you know, there's, I just feel like um, I have so much stake and equity in these characters because they've been around for so long and that's the yeah. advantage that Star Wars has over just about every piece of IP really out there. touch a lot of it? Because it felt like it, it looked better. It than looked before. cleaner, but I don't know if. And, and you know, it's funny. Even Lucas has been was working on and kind of re-upping all that stuff. I think even when uh, A New Hope was re-dropped on Disney Plus, we find out that he had changed a few of the lines of dialogue from Greedo uh, mm -hmm. when you know in the cantina scene. So it's like, who knows? They might have just like, eh, let's just throw a little uh, airbrush yeah. on that. Put it back in Photoshop. <laughs> yeah, they're not above changing. Because honestly, stuff. episode two, I mean, it's like the first film that was like officially like shot all on digital, I think is what it was. Yeah. That movie looks roughed by today's standards. Right. I mean, I think just seeing Yoda in even in that, in that yeah. teaser was kind yeah. of or the, the previously on was I was like, oh, that's right. We like that's why we like the puppet more, and that's why yeah. we have a puppet growing. Yeah, 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 it's crazy yeah, yeah. because I think for Phantom Menace, they originally shot him with a puppet, and when they went to the, do the re-release, they CGI'd him. And I was like, oh, why'd you do that? I know. Yeah. Why'd you I know. Do that? Um, okay, how about some big moments? Now, there's a, a bunch of little moments here that I think we can spend some time talking about. I loved personally as a fan of movies. There was a lot of like nods to like. Batteries not included. Did anyone oh, watch yeah. and love that movie as a kid? I remember that movie. Little Leia's little uh, she droid. Was born yet. <laughs> okay. Um, there was also a, a huge Breaking Bad um, sort of t tip of the hat too. I, I loved. Uh, I think on Reddit they were called either Breaking Ben or Better Call Mall. Yeah, Better Call Mall. <laughs> I, like I like Better Call Mall. Mall. That's good. Let's send some gold to that Reddit user's way. And on that, a little bit of John Wick too. Like there totally. was, I was literally, even before they show him, they, they show the bounty going out to all the, all the bounty hunters and all like the, in, in the episode two, which like also I love, cause it goes back to your world building thing. I'm like, look at all these cool, weird Star Wars characters. Yeah, yeah. This is like a Velociraptor man. Um, uh, in episode one, when he's digging up the lightsaber in my head, I was just like the John Wick line, like, yeah. I think I'm back. Yeah, Just I think I'm back. Yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of burying of lightsabers in the Star Wars universe. Yes, on Tatooine. You know, it's, like, it's always going to get dug back. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, I like how he tells the other Jedi, go to the middle of the desert, bury it, and walk away. And then you're like, oh, because that's what you did. <laughs> oh, yeah. By the way, Benny Softy. Yeah. Manny Softy, the director of Uncut Gems and Good Times. Uncut Gems? Uncut Gems. Uncut Gems. Is officially a Jedi. Oh, that was uh, him. Was a not guy. having a good time <laughs> in this show, by the way. But it's so fun to see um, who they cast and things like that. Speaking of, uh, Kumail Nanjiani uh, plays a... Jedi uh, yeah. wannabe. I thought that was fun. Like, totally fun. I think he's great in it because it's a it's it's comedic and and it brings a lighter tone to like what yeah. was kind of like a pretty yeah. you pretty. know straight and heavy sort of entrance to the series. Also, flee. Yeah, 
Flea. <laughs> why is Flea here? And like, I, I had to do some uh, some digging into it. And one of my friends was like, well, I think Deborah Chow directed one of the. And I was like, yep, Deborah Chow, Deborah Chow, the director of, of, of the Obi Wan series. She did not directed uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers uh, video. I think oh, Black Summer. I wonder, yeah. I wonder if he reached out to her or if she reached out to him. Like, why not both? And like, exactly. It could have just both? been both. They hey, guess what? I'm doing a for, Star Wars. You want to be in it? You know, could have gotten together for <laughs> a little doing brunch. A Star Wars. <laughs> uh, I, I I do think it's. Uh, well, full disclosure. So I I'm, was watching it. I was exhausted. We had a very long day with Attack of the Show yesterday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. yeah did we, we did do that? that? We did that. Uh, and then my week's been insane. So, like, when I watched the credits and then I saw Flea's name show up, I was like... <laughs> Which is Flea. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I was like who's Flea? <laughs> 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 and I couldn't, and I couldn't yeah. put my finger on it. But yeah. when I saw Flea show, I was like, "Damn, that dude looks familiar." Why can't Flea. I put this? His Princess Flea. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, they're <laughs> like, so funny. Speaking of though, <laughs> speaking of, um, I mean, I don't know if we want to get into this, but I do think that we have to address the elephant in the room, which was. The chase scene. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Oh, you mean how Leah's the hardest object? She's a greased up little parkour, piggy. Isn't parkour, she? parkour, yeah. parkour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I wanted more. Here's the thing. I would have believed that I was just like, like laughing, like especially in the moment where the one guy is almost about to get hit by like a like a limb yeah. or like a stump, yeah. and he's like, Ooh. I was waiting for some kind of comedic sound effect. I would have liked it had it been choreographed a little bit more. So she's like it, getting down to and to be deep. fair, yeah. it never looks good when like kids are like out in, in movies like. It, when a kid outruns or is no. able to beat up a human being, like a, like I think it was like what was that, like the Kick-Ass films, like the little girls just like murdering gangsters. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm a 300 pound dude. If that girl comes at me, she's getting flung, you know, like yeah, I, you know. yeah. But it, it, it's I will say obviously not. Uh, what was her name? Vivian, uh, the the actor oh. that plays uh, Leia. She oh. amazing. But no, she but it's rich. so difficult. Yes. To, like, do that. It is. It looks good on the page and in the comics and on the, you know, whatever, but man, when it's in live action. And then the guy's like running. He's like, yeah, the way they are selling it too. Yeah. It's yeah. so fun to see. Um, she's a fantastic actress, by the way. It's so fun to see how they uh, kind of give her a lot of that spunk, you know, a lot of the yeah. sort of like. That's the thing. Yeah. Is that um, in episode two, Obi Wan is like, you remind me a lot of Padme. Where I was like, no, she's reminding me a lot of Anakin in episode one well, because that, she's like asking a bunch of questions and she's being a little snarky. I, I, you know, it's funny you should say that because like when he said that, you remind me of someone I used to know, a friend of mine. I was like, I'm like, is he talking about Padme or Anakin? Because it could go either way. Yeah, because yeah. I, yeah. I love the idea that Luke kind of gets the softer, more caring side of Padme, where like. Um, Leia gets this very fiery sense from Anakin. I like that it's not just like but I don't the know. mom is like the daughter and the son is like the dad. I kind of, I, I totally agree with that. I just feel like, you know, Natalie's Natalie Portman's portrayal of Padme was that she was like, uh, hey, let's get stuff done. Type oh, yeah. Of person. And Padme is like and, a lot like that, Clone and that, Wars. And I love that about her. She's all very much into Clone Wars. She's a very assertive, very I don't take crap from anyone type of deal. And that's literally baby Leia here. You know, she's just like, I don't I don't care. I'm I'm going to tell you exactly. And I also think it's interesting, too, because you start to see a little bit of Leia's force sensitivity showing up that. in. In the show, uh, when she completely demolishes her older cousin, who's yeah. kind of sort of a douchebag. You're the one who's scared. You've never made one decision for yourself in your entire life, and you never will. Yeah. Uh, I she did one of those that. things where, like, you get into a fight with someone, and then later on that night, you're like, I should have said this. But she, she, said did, it right, she yeah. did it right she in that moment. Right her, there. her and Owen having the sickest burns oh. in yeah. the entire episode. Well, let's talk yeah. about um, let's talk about the Grand Inquisitors uh, and the Inquisitors, the big bads in this in the in these two episodes. Um, can you tell us who they are for maybe folks that that haven't read all the extra, you know, ancillary you're, you're comic man? I'm I'm animation yes, video games. So. And by the way, if we should point people to a piece of reading since this is a comic book uh, show. So yes, I mean, if you want to talk like uh, it, obviously go to the cartoons, like that's where you're gonna find the majority right. of it. Yeah. But there is in the Darth Vader comic, the 2017 run by Charles Sewell, which basically takes place. It's Darth Vader's journey as soon as he puts on the armor. No, literally as it happens. yeah, it's it's literally picks up right from there, and you find out that basically the Emperor, knowing that hey, I'm gonna need some 
force sensitive backup of we take the rest of these Jedi out. And this goes before like the actual uh, uh, the Empire taking over. He basically starts to like mine children and it's like we need to start coming up with our evil Jedi's and they're called the Inquisitorious. You know, um, it's basically like the evil version of the Jedi. Yeah. Because yeah. there's there's these kind of like there's these different kind of hierarchical relationships yep. and the, the sisters and the brothers and the Grand and Inquisitor. And it's, I feel like just kind of going back to what you said, talking about like this Jedi. Of course, we see get killed at the end of Episode One. Man, the younglings and like the Padawans who who suffer after Order sixty six. I feel like are the people who lose the most. We see it in Jedi yeah. Fallen Order. Kanan. We see it in Kanan. Or, or, we see it in Rebels. We see it in all this media. Like. You have these poor young Jedi who just get um, manipulated, who just get um, abused, who get interrogated, yep. and get forced to become well, these inquisitors. Well, and that's and that's the that's the thing, right there. Originally, they were like brought up by birth, and I believe that Anakin and Obi Wan at some point like stopped that operation. They're like, what's yep. going on here? Cad Bane was the one that yeah, Cad Bane was the one yeah. who's getting them. And then the Emperor's like, okay, well, what else can we do? Well, I can go after disaffected Jedi, Jedi who are just like, and that's where actually the Grand Inquisitor comes. He was, I believe. Jacosta news yes. uh, um, basically he wanted all the knowledge and the Jedi temple. yeah and Jacosta knew who's the librarian of the of the Jedi order was like nah that's cool bro you don't need this information and he gets a little bitter about that the Emperor basically manipulates all that and that's when we get to you know the Inquisitor Ooh, by the way Jacosta's a badass yeah uh, super mm -hmm. sick character um, I, I do also want to point out like if you do get an opportunity to read uh, some uh, Star Wars comics which I highly suggest you know just like what Becom said the Darth Vader comic series is so good. There's been three versions. They're in the third volume of it, and they all take place in different parts of Vader's life. The first one, which was when they... The first is, series. The first yeah. series takes place basically right after A New Hope, and it's great, and it kind of fills out a lot of the blanks. There's a great scene in it. Talking, we'll get into Alderaan in a second, but basically there's a great scene in that comic where literally Vader like throws a rock on the table, and you're all, you know what that is? That's the, last piece, that's the last piece of Alderaan right here. That's what happens to people who mess with me. And you're just like, oh, God. Yeah. The second one is picks up right after uh, the Revenge of the Sith, and that's kind of that journey. We see the Inquisitors, yeah. how he gets his lightsaber. That's my favorite. It's I great. And Charles Sewell's great. And then there's the current run that right now, and that takes place after basically the events of Empire Strikes Back. Back to what you said. Sorry. Grand Inquisitor is a character from Rebels. He has, he has a really, really big role in Rebels, and Rebels takes place after Obi Wan. So, oh. like, we he looks like he got a little stabby stab, but he got Qui Gon. He got Qui Gon, uh. but his on, and but he's also gonna probably pull a Fennec Chand. Yep. Where like we've learned that even if you get a shot in the tummy. It's not the end all be all. So you're just, yeah, you're yeah. just going to become a little bit he robotic. He's going to be a little pissed at uh, Reva. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that was the thing, too. Um, like, I love Reva's arc. I love that immediately in episode one, we get her want. I want Obi Wan so I can prove myself and, like, and I can give him. I think there's something more afoot here, Darth though. Yeah. yeah. With, with this, because I don't think it's necessarily a I want. Obi-Wan because I need to prove myself. I think I she think wants that, revenge. I think that this is a combination of revenge and I think that there's, because Reva was created for the show. Yes. She is not, she is not in the well, comics. She's, she's, they don't call her a sister. They call her Reva though, right? No, they call, they call her, her. Oh, they did. Okay, okay. Sister. They call her third sister third and then sister. a few times the fifth brother says yeah. Reva. Okay. Because um, usually they don't call them by their names. No, they don't. But it, but it's very clear that they don't respect no, her. No, no. They they're literally, you're gutter trap. Yeah, which means and also that line at the end with the that when she got the Grand Inquisitor, so good. Who's in the gutter now? What I think is quite fascinating here with uh, the Darth Vader slash Reva relationship is that it's 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 almost as if they both have this this disdain for the Jedi Order, not because Palpatine told them to, but because they felt let down it, by it the failed system. Them. It failed them. Yeah. So that I think is going to be fascinating to develop into in this series because it's very clear that they view the Jedi mind, the, the Jedi way as a disease and I I just love that. It's I love a, it's, that angle. It's incredibly similar to Fallen Order because that's very much the same kind of plot line of the sis, of, of the the Inquisitor sister in that game. Yeah. Because she her her old master is the one that is training Cal, and so she's like, it's not only like about I'm going to take out the Jedi because it's I personal. was failed at them. It's personal. It's personal. And speaking of Jedi Fallen Order, oh my gosh, the first episode was such a beautiful like. It was such a nice parallel. If you've played Jedi Fallen Order, you pick up with Cal. He is a scrapper on like the the big kind of ship graveyard for all the Imperial yep. and like 
uh, galactic vessels and they even find like a Jedi star cruiser and it's just so heartbreaking because he like wipes the grid off of it. But yeah, just seeing these Jedi having to be in hiding in these mundane jobs. And then even the shot where Obi-Wan is sitting on the transport, they do the same thing with Cal. He's sitting in the train and he's just, and that's when he starts to have this weird force vision and you get to see kind of his origin where he kind of like turns around, he's on uh, the star cruiser right before Order 66 happens. But it was just these beautiful parallels that I just, I, I love and respect how the games are being incorporated into yeah. Star Wars and it's being acknowledged. I mean, we saw the BD units yeah. in, uh, in, in Boba, Boba Fett. Been Boba Fett. Yeah. And, and just seeing, or yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear Boba Fett. Boba Fett, where? Boba Fett. And so I know there's a lot of rumors. Are we going to see Cal here? Maybe, maybe not. But just that kind of those parallels was so wonderful to see. Well, we'll get into wild speculation and Easter eggs here in a sec. Um, I just want to say that I really like the fact that Ben is trying to not use his powers, right? He has to use the force to save Leia. Um, but that's kind of right out of the uh, the Obi Wan journal, <laughs> right? Where he's not using the force, not letting anyone know he's a Jedi to um, the demise of in this episode of one of the Jedi played by Benny Safdie, his inaction is leading to the death now. Yeah. People. Well, because in the comics, we do see that, you know, he, he he goes to town and he like basically uses his force powers to like knock things around, this, that, and the next thing. And then he's like, oh, I just drew too much attention to myself. Yeah. I can't go back to town for a long time. Yeah. Um, and even when he does use his powers, it's like, usually it's in the dark and no one can see him and he's like effing stuff up. It's one of those things where him building to the point where he actually finally pulls out his lightsaber. So cool. Yeah. Um, now let's talk about what I thought was probably one of the most interesting scenes in both episodes was the realization that oh my god anakin is alive and he's that trauma is real man that, let's talk about that i that mean was, that, that honestly really, great scene. really points to just how much this is the ewan McGregor. you know like kind of like moon knight was like the oscar isaac show yeah this is the ewan mcgregor show i mean that guy is just going too talented forward. for his own damn good yeah I mean, he, <laughs> that's what they say about me but, you know it's a burden i carry <laughs> love it well i hate it he sells so much just with his eyes. He doesn't have yeah. to say anything. You just see it in his eyes. And like yeah. that pain and anguish and realization, I mean, that hit me in the feels right there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just something that I think we've all thought about, you know, and we just have never seen on screen. And it was so. Yeah. So and we never fun. really had the, the confirmation yeah. that you know, like who knew what or what information was being shared. We had the inclination in a new hope that Ben uh, Kenobi was aware of who Vader is, but did not share that information with Luke purposefully. Um, but, you know, you never knew like when that would come yeah. about. So to get that 10 years in, and and it also makes you think like that 10 years from Revenge of the Sith up to Kenobi, what the hell has happened since then? Because I guess Vader has been pretty low key. Uh, let me Kenobi introduce you to a fun little show called The Bad Batch, which yeah. takes up right after Order 66 happens. They, they haven't really done too much with it yet. I'm curious to see what they do in season two, but yeah. I think it's because a, you know, Kenobi is in the Outer Rim, which is like kind of removed from like the galactic Very true. politics. I mean, you got to remember there's thousands and thousands of planets, you know, in this galaxy. And so he's on a backwater planet who's probably not getting a newspaper every day, I'd imagine, you know. So he's probably just not hearing what's going on. Go ahead. I also think it's because after the events of episode three, he's like turned himself yeah. off from the force. So yeah. he's not force sensitive. And there's a whole thing that they kind of do in the Clone Wars a little bit where it's like, and we see in these other films where like Anakin has died. The force sense that was Anakin is no more. Darth mm. Vader is here. Yes. So it's that force sense that exists rather than like Anakin. So when people like are like Ahsoka or Obi-Wan are trying to sense Anakin, it's hard because Darth Vader is that presence. Yeah, that's yeah and what a last sort of cool image to leave the episode on. What a cliffhanger. Which makes sense why we got two episodes. Yeah, yes. we needed mm -hmm. that. Because yeah. even though I would have been perfectly satisfied with episode one and its conclusion of, yeah. of him realizing like the hero's got to ride one last time, yeah. Yeah. I think that that Darth Vader end out was the the best thing that you could possibly ask for uh and i really think you know i think this is gonna be a little bit of a uh, revenge arc uh you know redemption arc rather well, we're for gonna Hayden get into that in in wild speculation let's talk easter eggs mm -hmm. now there's there's a, always, uh, always a ton there's a quite a few yeah and i and i had to go back and rewatch some stuff 
What'd you pick up? Maybe we can I'm, get our heads together. Some of it, I mean, I would say, you know, arguably is Easter egg. Some of it could just be like, that's just a reference. Yeah. To, you know, that's something cool like that, that they showed. This I mean, and I think, from that movie. So I think we should kind of get into that. But I mean, yeah. like number one, uh, we had a C-3PO cameo on Alderaan. Right. Which I thought was great. Oh, uh, nice. The uh, T sixteen Skyhopper, which is the, the, the toy, the toy. So he, you, that's the we see Luke messing around with that in A New Hope. And we essentially that's either that's that one or just Luke happens to have another one. Wouldn't it just be great if it was the same one? It probably is. Yeah. I mean, that's probably what, is. We and again, kind of going to that. That's we see a lot of though that same imagery in the comics where uh, in the comics. Obi Wan basically goes to the Jawas. Hey, I want some parts because Luke busts up his TC, his actual Skyhopper. Luke uh, Obi Wan goes to the, the Jawas, gets some parts, gives it to him. Owen comes back to him and says, "Get your crap out of my house. Right. Leave my family alone. I don't want you here." He's like, "Well, we need to train. The, we need to train him. Like you trained his dad. Right. It's literally a one to one from the comics so cool. on the page. Everyone's motivations are so clear. By the way, it's great to see. The other thing that I think is uh, interesting is the clone trooper cameo by Tamara yes. Morrison. Oh, Homeless yes, uh, yes. clone trooper. 501st armor. I love it. It was, five, it was 100% 501st. Yeah. It is so sad. Just that moment. There is so much like... If, if you've seen Clone Wars, if you've known this stuff, like, it's just like, oh my gosh, there's so much going on here because, yeah, like, basically, bad bitch. Um, <laughs> you mean Scar Squadron? Oh, wait, not yet. <laughs> I like but, the way you say bad, bad. bad, bad bitch. bitch. Um, basically, they start to realize once the Empire takes over, they're like, mm, making clones is way too damn expensive. What if we just started conscripting people who have bad aim? Uh, and so that's how right. you get the stormtroopers. Maybe yeah, they're yeah, doing yeah, that on purpose. That. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't want to do this job. <laughs> and so, so they start to phase out the clones, but as the clones like the clones don't have any autonomy in the government they yeah. don't they like they they're not people and so they just get thrown into this into the gutter veterans hmm mm, yeah, and what so, are they saying there yeah and yeah. so it's just so sad because as obi-wan is looking at him there is that moment of recognition and there's just this moment where too he's um, he's clearly like in this kind of interior battle with himself because it's like man you guys are the reason i'm here and i'm not like i'm 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 on the outskirts and i have to hide but also i fought alongside you and i know you yeah, yeah. and so ah, it was just like it was well, a beautiful beautiful moment and even that moment just the stormtroopers that are in their pristine walking armor by. just walking by like get yeah. out of trash it's, it's like yeah it was like that was like you're kind of a fellow brother in a weird way you might not have been in the same war but it's i love dirt. stuff that just has direct parallels to like real life yeah yeah. Oh, uh, what I also think was quite interesting as well, maybe not so much an Easter egg, but but a, a, a little nugget of information. The Senate is still a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right? We kind of got a little bit of that in the Andor trailer yeah. as well. We yeah. see the Senate chamber in the Andor well, trailer. Well, because it doesn't get dissolved until uh, New yeah. Hope. It yeah. doesn't get dissolved until New Hope, until Palpatine just takes full like the hell that I'm, I'm, Chancellor yeah. or something like I'm, that. I'm the Emperor. Um, but I, I find it to be fascinating because Jimmy Smith, who, by the way, shout out to yeah. the brother, always. Jay love Smith. to see, uh, you know, a, a fellow Latino doing his thing. But uh, Badass. what was fascinating was Jimmy Smith's talking to the other senator and saying, like, well, we have to fix the slavery problem, you know, the taxation labor issue, the problem. taxation <laughs> issue, the outer rim, you know. And, and the other senator's just like, <laughs> I don't care. And it's just, it, it's like so many parallels to, like, our society as yeah. it is right now. And it just goes to show you, it doesn't matter how far you get from the gallery. Galaxy politicians gonna be corrupt. Right. Speaking <laughs> it's of terrible. Jimmy, I just want to give Jimmy a nice little shout out. That moment where he gets down on his knees and looks at Leia after she says, "I'm yeah. not an Organa," yeah. and he says, "You are an Organa in every way." Just that moment where he just completely drops in. I started to get choked up because it was just so beautiful. Right. To that end, I also love the fact that there's such a, an, a, an interesting parallel between him and Owen. Owen is like, look, you tried to train him and look how you messed up. Whereas Jimmy Smith's like, you tried, you tried. Yeah. We make mistakes. Yeah. Get back up. Yeah. And yeah. I thought it was just, it was interesting. Like, those. yeah. Let's talk about theories, wild speculation. And I think uh, mm. I think there's a lot of room here. There's could be a number of different things. I know you've got some oh, ideas. Oh, I got a lot. Maybe we go around ideas. the horn first because I, I can. I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. I think the big one for me, kind of going back to my clone boys, who I love so much. Um, 
I, because we, you brought up a good point right before we started recording, B Comp, that we do see clone armor in the trailer. Yep. We do see this kind of clone armor trailer. I don't think it's that random you 501st don't. guy. You don't? I think it's none other than Captain Rex. All right. Because be. Tamara Morrison, like, we, hey, we're showing that he can play an older clone. Great. And Captain Rex kind of has that bald look, especially like as he gets into Rebels, he kind of has that older grizzled look. Yeah. Stick a white beard on that man. He's Captain Rex. Okay. And so I think, I think that will be the person who kind of comes, helps Obi-Wan and maybe that's how that relationship is mended because we see it in Rebels when Ahsoka and Rex get to meet up yeah. again and so I would love that reunion I think a lot of fans have been clamoring for that reunion oh, yeah we like it I also, think that oops, go for it oh no on top of the same I'll pitch another uh, speculation after sure uh, I think that the other it's very clear that especially with Dave Filoni involved that the objective is going to be to blend the animated uh, stories more so, you know, with these Disney Plus series. So is is Rex a, a highly possibility? Like, I totally believe so. Um, I think that we are also going to potentially get maybe a reference or something to what we could be seeing in uh, Andor. I think that, you know... There's a lot of hype around Andor because the story, you know, it's a great story. It takes place five years uh, before A New Hope, or sorry, five years before Rogue One, uh, which There's leads literally Hope. right into A New Rogue. Hope. So I guess it is kind of sort of the same thing, which means that it takes place five years after uh, the conclusion of the Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, series. So I think that there has to be something there. Maybe not Cassian Andor, but it has to be some other character that kind of appears that that creates that connection oh, I like between that. the, the yeah. two. Yeah, no, that's good. Be calm. Uh, if we want to go wild or are we going to go safe? Safe speculation is Qui-Gon Jinn, a.k.a. Liam Neeson, is going to show up. Oh, 100%. 100%. Wait, what's his name? Uh, the Neesons. The Neesons. Okay. okay, the Neesons. Shout out to Key and Peele. I mean, I think that's just like a 100%, like that's going to happen. Either as a voice. We've seen him as a voice, his character, I believe, in Rebels. He shows mm -hmm. up as a Force ghost. And I think that'll have to play some part in all of this, whether mm -hmm. like Obi-Wan's like, if we talk about this as like the, the hero's journey, he's going to have to go through his like his deepest point yeah. and maybe it's Liam Neeson or Qui-Gon rather who comes and says That's gives him that great. motivation to the kind of pop up. I would love him great to be safe. like because I feel like Qui-Gon is such like this pinnacle like he is the best like he was a great mentor he, he, he could was not, the best of us he all he could not fail and I feel like Obi-Wan especially right now is comparing himself to his old master like how did how did I let this guy how did I let this guy down how did I let my Padawan down so maybe in that flash like maybe in that force ghost moment we have Qui-Gon be like look it wasn't all it wasn't all roses and space peaches for me either. Like I I I failed. I made mistakes. Hmm. So I'm gonna go. This is the wildest of all. Ooh, hit me with it, this baby. This is why we so, do this show, baby. Grogu in uh, Empire Strikes Back when Luke Skywalker takes off to go to Bespin. Uh, he's Obi Wan says Obi Wan Force Ghost says to Yoda, "That boy is our last hope." No. There is another. We always thought that meant to be Leia. Like, no one knew that it was Leia. But at this point, we know that Le Obi-Wan knows who Leia is. So why would he just be like, oh, well, you know, Leia, you know, like Leia's the other hope. Well, could that other hope be recontextualized to be oh, Grogu? Wow. We know Grogu was alive during Order 66. He was at the Jedi Temple. Yeah. Could they somehow like, oh, like, where did he go? Who hit right. him? Who got him out? There's all, you know, kind of going to that point. We've seen almost all the footage in the trailer we've seen so far has been in these first two episodes. Right. There's yep. so much more to see. There's like, like literally the only two shots that we haven't seen yet is like that hammer from a clone trooper armor, which I still, th I think it's that clone trooper, but that's me. And then I, there's also um, the base. Uh, there's uh, a NUR, the, the, the moon planet of NUR, which is the yeah. Inquisitorious underwater base on, yeah. on that. So there, and we didn't even see anything of Leia in that footage mm -hmm. that we saw so far. I'm just that's saying, good. It's, it's a wild. This no, is wild. That's, but that's why we up. do the show. Sweet. We get wild. I'm gonna, I might, I might, I might top it. Oh, please go for it. Oh have you heard? Of the, show me up. Have you heard of the Corky theory? Corky Kreese. Uh -huh. is the nephew of Satine and Bo-Katan. Bo oh, okay. So Corky's in... Corky Sackhoff? Sorry, Buck? Yeah. <laughs> Corky is in Clone Wars. And uh, throughout Clone Wars, he is like Aunt Satine, Aunt Bo-Katan, da-da-da-da-da. But we never know who his parents are. We never hear of any other siblings to Satine or Bo-Katan. Mm. 
Oh. So the theory that grew was that Corky was the love child between Satine and Obi-Wan because they had a relationship. Mm. And so could he pop up? I mean, part of the required watching to according to Disney plus UK was the, the Satine, Satine arc, arc. Yeah. on Mandalore, which did include Darth Maul, which did include the Death Guard, which did include Obi-Wan Please. jetting around, having a good time yeah. until. Wow. The Obi-Wan deadbeat dad theory. Mm. Well, well, that was, the, that was a supposed theory, theory for, for the, for the uh, new trilogy series. Yeah, it was supposed was to be Ray. Ray was the, that Ray was a love child. Child of Obi Wan, I, I don't know, but that or, guys, that's like me hanging on the Ghost Rider. Speaking real quick on that end, on the new trilogy, it also recontextualizes Ben Solo's origin of his name. Yes, you know. Yeah, yeah. God, this is great. This is why we do the show. Uh, unfortunately, we're out of time. Wow. Um, we're going to be here every week going over episodes of Obi-Wan on Disney+. Plus, and maybe there's going to be more coming up depending on how these videos do. I don't know. I'm just saying, oh. if you throw us a like... Uh, leave us a comment. Uh, tweet the video to all your friends. To sp spread it around to social media. And maybe the show will keep on going. I want to thank Emily for joining us today from X Play. Thank you so much. And uh, GB. And of course, <laughs> the beard stroking Brian Compton. Please, guys, join us next week. This has been Fresh Ink. I'm Cassim G. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.